Why do you engineering graphics and design learners? This is episode 2 in the How to Hack Your Pet series, only on How to EGD. And in this video, we're going to do a deep dive into the research part of the Civil Pet for 2021. And I'm going to also, at the end of this video, show you a couple of previous practical examples of pets that will really help you get a good picture of what is the requirements to be met. All right, without any further blah 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 from my side, let's get going. Okay, we're going to jump to the official engineering graphic and design pad document, which you've all received, page 10 specifically, addressing the phase one presentation requirements. And so this discussion is really going to be about what you need to present to your teacher as part of this submission. Now, in my first video, I did an in-depth discussion on these first two paragraphs, which is your design brief, your specifications, and your constraints, as well as your management plan. Now, just a couple of highlights back to that first episode. The first two paragraphs that you need to set up is discussed here, but what's important is make sure that both of them are in your own words, okay? Those two requirements are very valuable. The first one actually just gives an overview of actually what is the project. The second one will highlight the complete design process for your client or your teacher. And that will mean you'll have to really do a deep dive into what would be the process. I'm going to start with research. Then I'm going to do my concept designs. Then I'm going to do working drawings, etc. That's what you're going to explain, the process that you're going to follow um, in the second paragraph and look at the first video if you are unsure about that. Then also as part of your design brief you will have to come up with 20 unique specifications and I've spoken about this it can all be um, taken out of page 9 of that document and then five possible constraints which we also looked at plus a management plan. Okay that was a recap on episode 1. Episode 2 which we're doing right now is all about research people. Now why is this important? You cannot proceed without having understanding and knowledge of what you are going to design. Okay, so there's only three things that they prescribe for you to design. Let's have a look. You need to design or look at research, the design and construction of aluminium stacking doors. Okay, Design and construction detail of aluminium stacking doors. Make sure you research aluminium stacking doors. It's not aluminium windows or sliding doors, it's stacking doors. The second topic in your research is the designs and construction of what? A large timber deck and railing. Okay, make sure again this is a timber deck and that these railings also as part of your research. And the third component in your research is that you need to design or look at or research the designs of small indoor pools. People, this is not exterior pools. It must show indoor pools. Those are the only three prescribed research items for you. But can I ask you, who of you have ever designed a lodge? I'm sure there's no hands going up, right? So I would like to add here a couple of other things that I think shouldn't necessarily be seen in your research but you will have to look at a couple of designs, layouts of other lodges for you to have any clue how to get this project started. But these three are the ones specified. Let's look a bit further. What do they say about this research that you're going to do? All right, the research must be relevant. Okay, in other words, it must be on aluminium stacking doors, large timber decks with railings and small indoor pools. Okay, relevant should therefore be primarily in the form of graphic material, pictures and illustrations. And I'm going to show you examples of these in a moment. They don't want you to dump a lot of text here. They're focusing on pictures and illustrations. Okay, Evidence of all the required research material must be included in the PAT portfolio. So you actually have to prove this research by actually putting it on paper. How do you present it? The presentation of the research material should be aesthetically presented. In other words, people, it should look nice, good, well laid out, well designed, yeah? and may not exceed four A4s or two A3 pages 
per topic. Okay, now I've told my learners that it's the minimum of one A3 per topic. Okay, that's the minimum. One A3 page per topic. What's the maximum? Two A3 pages per topic. There must be clear evidence that the research has been used in your proposed design solution. Okay, so they're looking for evidence to, that indicates to them that the research that you did, the relevant research that you did, was actually used in your proposed design solution. I'm going to tell you how to do that in a moment. And you need to include a bibliography. All references must be used. Okay, all right. Let's look at a couple of examples. Okay, so this is uh, previous year's work. Um, they had to uh, design, an, uh, of part of their pet was actually the design of an open plan kitchen. Now you can see again here, there's two components. There's the actual design, the look and feel that's indicated here, but there's also actual practical designs, yeah, the construction part of it. How do, how do we fit these together, the actual layout of a kitchen? There's a couple of examples. That's the, the synergy between the two, the design plus the construction part. Here we have a um, raised wooden veranda that was, again, they need to uh, re uh, research the design, but also the construction. Same here, construction, the construction, there's the designs. So take from this the fact that you need to find different images with regard to aluminium stacking doors. You need to have the look and feel, the design, where they fit in, how they aesthetically look, but you also need to have kind of CAD drawings, 3D drawings that highlights the actual um, construction of them. And then I asked my learners to add just a couple of their own notes to each one of these pictures. Otherwise, it's just like a picture dump and you, you, know, you don't really take anything from it, but just highlight what is it in this that you like or that you've learned from. This is where it comes in, where you actually prove that your evidence was used in your design. Let's look at another one. Now, this is in Afrikaans, but again, this was of an open plan living area. Now, you can see the construction part of it, or the layout part of it, the physical measurements, etc. But on this side, it's the design part, the look and feel. And again, the learner, in this case, indicated what they like of and what they are going to use in their actual uh, uh, concepts and eventually their final solution. So make sure that it is usable um, research and that you actually indicate to your teacher what about this are you liking and what are you going to use in your own um, portfolio. Okay, there's another one uh, of again the verandas with the design and then the construction parts. Now remember you're doing stacking doors, you're doing an indoor pool, and uh, a wooden deck. So yours might look a little bit different, of course, but the layout here is important, okay? And another point that I'd like to give, make sure we're in South Africa, so make sure any measurements that you do show here must be in metric, please. Okay, let's go to your summative assessment sheet, and there is some important matters to look at. Okay, so on your actual assessment criteria and checklist for the civil pet, which you have available, and I'll add a download link in the description to this document. We've discussed the, the design brief in episode two. We're looking at the research at this moment. And here it again highlights the fact that you need to maximi maximize two, pa two A3 pages per topic. And again, how do you number this? Okay, so... 2.1, your actual page number must be 2.1, or your heading number, 2.1, okay? And this will reflect also in your index that we'll do right at the end. But So 2.1 in your case will read design and construction detail of aluminium stacking doors. That will be your title for that actual page in your book, and it will be 2.1. Make sure it's nice and clear, all right? This is even a little bit small. I would really enlarge it so it's visible and clearly indicates what page you are on. 2.2 designs and construction detail of a timber deck and railing. So again, that will be 2.2 here and then your heading. 2.3 design of small indoor pools. Okay, so each one of these items counts two marks. In the end, clear evidence that the research has been used in your proposed design solution. That's again where I ask you to just add a sentence to say this I like about this picture. That's why I chose the picture and this I will use in my final 
concept. Okay, that's just that evidence that your research has been used. And of course, you need to then incorporate that in the actual drawing. And then, of course, your list of bibliography. All of this counts too, gives you a total out of 10 just for your research component. So this is something that I'm confident that each of you can get 10 out of 10 with. Okay, with that then, I'm wrapping it up. Make sure you uh, get all this done nice digitally on a Word document, for instance. Make sure you do your layout A3 from the very start of uh, creating this document. And, of course, you don't have to just go to Google Images. You can visit your local hardware store and get their pamphlets on aluminium stacking doors or uh, maybe you've got a local pool company that can give you advice. I encourage that. One of my previous learners, they did great by actually going to, you know, the physical, this was a hospital that they had to design, and he went to that hospital, took pictures of the waiting area, uh, the reception, etc. And that's encouraged. You don't just have to do Google Images. Show maybe a bit of initiative and creativity and go for actual you know, interviews with architects in your area that can assist you and help you. Okay, that's it. This is episode two wrapped up for you. Now it's your turn.